We do know that the markets have been quite volatile recently. Risk aversion set in and we're also told of sell-off in major emerging market assets as people not really looking for yield, looking for safe havens. And they believe, despite everything that's happened in the United States, that Treasury bills and that economy probably is the safest. Let's talk about some of those uh, complex issues. Don Huber is the portfolio manager for Franklin Global Growth Fund. He's visiting South Africa this week. He's with me here in studio. Thanks so much for your time, Don. How do you make sense of everything that's happening internationally? Well, thank you, Loretta. I appreciate the opportunity to meet with you. Uh, you know, our focus is long term. We're, we're long term investors. We own a concentrated portfolio of high conviction of roughly 40 companies, and they're growth companies that we think have sustainable business models and growth over the long term. So in a market like this, we stay focused on the companies, we stay yeah. focused on the opportunity. Yeah. We own a mix of companies and a portfolio that we think over, uh, you know, in most market environments should do well and certainly should do well over the long term. I mean, if you're focusing purely on company fundamentals and sectoral issues, to what extent do these macro forces like volatile currencies, inflation, central banks being confused, to what extent does that inform your decisions? You know, it, it, not to a tremendously meaningful extent. Um, you know, we, we really try to tune out a lot of the near-term noise and a lot of the near-term focus. Clearly, we are focused on the pace of economic recovery and, and are watching that. Um, but we really aren't making a call on that. We own a group of companies that we think through a market cycle should perform well. Um, these are companies, some that have cyclical exposure and, and will grow at a slower pace in a, you know, in a slower recovery. Um, and some companies that have no cyclical right. exposure at all. I mean, people look at somebody like Warren Buffett for all the good reasons, but they say what makes him stand out is that he is very meticulous about being a value investor. For you, when you say value, what does that mean? Well, to us, value is a component of what we do. It's not the driving force of what we do. Um, for us, as we look at value of the companies that we're buying, we want to make sure that, that the share price that we're paying or for a company or, or the share price for a current company that we own is reasonable given the growth expectations uh, that we see going forward. Which sectors would those be? Because when people look at Africa, for instance, it's really a resource play. People always say, it doesn't matter what global economies are doing, you're likely to get better returns if you're moving into commodities, for instance. So people tend to flood into those kinds of companies, telecoms as well. What's your approach? Yeah, our, our approach is really fundamental bottom up. We're looking for the best growth opportunities we can find that, that meet our criteria, growth, quality, and valuation. Mm -hmm. And those can be across sectors. Uh, I agree there are resource opportunities um, around the world in, in a variety of different ways. Yeah. We own several oil field services companies or, or energy services companies, where, which we think offer attractive growth. We own a precious metals uh, refining and, and product company as mm -hmm. well. When investors say to you, here's a suitcase of money that I have, I'm sure it's not quite as crude as a suitcase, build me a beautiful portfolio. How do you go about doing it? Well, our view again is, is from a bottom-up stock selection basis, we're looking to buy 40 great companies and companies that we can own for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And so our analysts are doing a tremendous amount of in-depth research into the growth characteristics, cash flow generation, mm -hmm. the sustainability of the business model, the competitive position, mm -hmm. the quality of management, shareholder returns, right. and, and valuation. I mean, obviously, a lot of uh, even novice investors are looking at uh, stock markets and saying, I want to ensure that my investments either track the index or outperform. And when we're seeing these very uh, volatile movements, it's a very difficult call to make. It is a difficult call to make, and I think, um, you know, particularly for investors who are looking to market time, which I think is, is uh, you know, unfortunately comes part and parcel with the volatility mm -hmm. that we're seeing, and investors are worried about whether now's the right time to be investing or whether they should be, as you mentioned, going into, going into treasuries. Yeah. Our view, again, is over the long term, we own a great portfolio of businesses that that over the long term and through the years uh, should perform very well, should grow very, very at, at attractive rates, mm -hmm. um, great sustainable business models uh, with a variety of underlying economic drivers. And have you beat the various indices out there? We have a very strong long-term track record, um, <laughs> a very strong track record, both relative to our benchmark and on a risk-adjusted basis. When investors come to you and say, we're looking to enter emerging markets, they are hot, um, they've got good returns, they've got good yielding assets. What do you say 
and and how do you and how do they compare because there's a big debate right now whether come to Africa or go to Asia for instance yes I you know certainly emerging markets are an engine for growth in the world going forward I don't think they're the sole engine for growth um, for, for the global economy and they certainly aren't the sole engine for growth in our companies uh, we look at businesses on, and companies on a case-by-case -case basis we've found companies in emerging markets that we have found attractive mm -hmm. we also own a number of companies that are based in developed markets that are expanding and investing in emerging markets mm -hmm. uh, both Asia as well as Africa your views on Africa you know, I think Africa over the long term offers tremendous growth potential and I, I recognize that, that one of the uh, hot areas for investors to discuss right now is you know, frontier markets as yeah. opposed to emerging Asian markets. markets. Um, and, and frankly, I think there's some validity in that and, and the growth to come long term from, from Africa. And our companies recognize that as well. You know, a company like American Tower, a, 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 a wireless mm. tower operator, um, bought some towers in South Africa, for example. So I think our, our companies, even as I say, in the developed markets, see some potential here. But there's still a bit of a reticence when it comes to Africa. And I know it's an infrastructure issue. It's also just a question of the kinds of expenditure that's needed to get businesses running really well on the continent and a variety of other issues. How reticent are you at the moment? I think, you know, th th one of the issues that, that we have in investing in um, many of the companies in Africa is liquidity. Um, you know, as I said, we manage concentrated portfolios. Positions are two to three, three and a half percent mm -hmm. positions in the portfolio. And we need a certain amount of liquidity to be able to, to, to get in and out. Um, so that's been one of the, I think, one of the limiting factors for us. Okay, but thanks so much for your time here. And thank you for just giving us a sense of the work that you do. It's Don Huber. He's uh, Vice President for Franklin Templeton's Global Growth Fund. Just joining us here for an overview of uh, some sort of an investment strategy you need to have in these economic times.